Hello, I'm David Chipson, editor of Third Wednesday Magazine, an independent quarterly journal of literary and visual arts, available in print and now free online at thirdwednesdaymagazine.org. This is one in a series of recorded readings produced to highlight books by some of our magazine's contributing poets. For today's reading, I'm joined by Nancy Jo Allen, whose first collection of poetry is Wrinkles in Time and in Love from Kelsey Books. It's available from the publisher's website and at amazon.com. Nancy Jo Allen was born in Minneapolis, Minnesota, now lives in Columbia, Missouri. She earned her Master of Fine Arts in Writing from Spalding University in Louisville, Kentucky. Her photos, fiction, and poetry are published in various journals. Wrinkles in Time and in Love is crafted to capture difficulties in identification and in relationships. Now let's welcome Nancy Jo Allen. Thank you, hello. I'd like to begin with my poem entitled Art, which was published by Third Wednesday and it sums up much of how many of these poems were born. Art, art keeps odd hours, so must the artist who awakens in darkness, answering the call as it gnaws like mice consuming crumbs of emotion, of memory, and ropes that bind the lion's strength. Quadratic equation. With many notes penciled amid the graffiti on my Algebra Brooks brown bag cover, which sat on my desk during quizzes and tests, I passed with a D minus. I still cannot grasp quadratic equations and I'm not proud of cheating to pass. I am the X in your life's math. As your mother though, I do not see myself as unknown. The values of your logical expressions are unknown to me, not numbers, but people. Your A, B, and C represent voices that to you are not zero or are therefore solvable, yet your problems remain unsolved. This reminds me of the blue plastic ball you push shapes through with pudgy fingers. This early encounter with math did not work without appropriate shape to pass through the matching hole. Graph your equation anew with the appropriate factors of one for you and one for me. And let's see where the X and the Y actually intersect in your life's graph. For I have value and so do you. Empty vessels. Common to the sea, not land. Bony beauties now crowded and revealing glass jar. Delicate whirls, spires and shades of brown white to black, translucent silver, polished by waves. We too are consumed, growing hard in limited color range. Once as bivalves connected by muscle, we grew pearl children. Now we are separate, empty vessels, you and I. Red buds and bonsai. Like Degas, ballerinas in repose, red buds line the streets. Some fold in among themselves, others form groups intertwined, delicate, lovely. The buds have opened red to shades of pink, dressing the trees in airy crinoline tutus. Each displays unique, unique beauty, unlike the countenance of oak, linden, maple, so predictable. In show like Japanese bonsai trees on large scale. This wabi-sabi aesthetic evolved from nothingness by controlling roots, confining the plants in small spaces, thwarting growth, and bend to the will of another's vision of beauty for meditation. In desperate times, they fold in among themselves at women. Survivor. You do not have to be a silent victim, a drift on a sea of grief. You do not have to choke on the miasma of lavender smoke that settles over the burnt forest of your subconscious. You only have to let the cloud of fog lift after March snows rain on the wind and the wildest in the earliest hours outside the window like a photograph in black and in white. You do not have to let the memory march along the shore of your sea of pain you do not have to listen to the voice in the attic of your memory. After it lays you in ruins, 
you only have to let the linens hung in the furthest corner of your cellar warm you like a shawl as you sit among the runes within, holding your breath in the wild stillness of memory. You do not have to wall out the latest light during your dying days and you do have to cloud the, do not have to cloud the nearest presence in fog and in rain and in ruin. You only have to lift the coffin lid and reveal the bony truth that you were unjustly wronged and then walk away. Sorry about the bifocals. <laughs> Sunday morning newspaper. Coffee spills on the business section, edges toward the gray velvet box on the countertop as I read about gray divorce and financial distress. The box cushions a diamond bracelet worn once worth 10 times what the pawn shop will pay. I pour more coffee and turn the page. Shrapnel. It took decades to work itself to the surface of his thigh, <clears throat> a remnant of his last sortie in early April, 1945. The one that sent him home to North Dakota, the one in which he nearly bailed over Italian fields far below in a parachute he later learned was also pierced. The shrapnel, a piece of that silk, and the purple heart he earned for that mission decorate my office wall, nestled safely inside a shadow box of memorabilia. But the box cannot hold the passing sound of my father's voice, <clears throat> fading like all shadows on a cloudy day. Hunting. I sit in the waiting room watching the TV mounted on the wall. This hound is off on National Geographic. A lioness prowls through savannah grasses, the color of her coat as she crouches, becoming as small as she can with shoulder blades jutting up as she lowers her body deeper into the dirt, readying herself to capture the family's meal. I recall when I was a young girl at play in the neighbor's unmown lawn. It had gone to seed and was like that savanna grass. I pretended to be a lioness, prowling for prey, to feed my family, to care for them, to protect them. A nurse enters the room calling my husband's name. I gather my things and sling them over my shoulder as we cautiously walk to the exam room, hunting for answers. Hiding the chick. When your head is turned away from me, I ease the small resin chick out of its perch on the Game of Thrones bookend near the yellow lighted lamp. It's been hidden in full view for two days now. It's time to move it and start the next round of hide and seek. You go about your business, killing one monster after another with one mighty smote here and a full out battle there. My chance opens as your character dies and you choose and you close your eyes in defeat. The chick is easily set next to you on the end table as I plant a kiss on the crown of your head, which is in slight, slight need of a, some trimming. <clears throat> the stray hair tickles my nose. I wonder how long it'll take for you to find the chick and move it to a new and silly location, like the time I found the chick near the toaster holding a metal knife, my favorite. Your playfulness attracts me, making life fun, youthful in my late seasons. So I sit next to you on the plaid couch, as idle as I can, enjoying your gaming skills. A few hours pass and I discover you have somehow sneaked past me during the afternoon and wrapped the chick in toilet paper like a sleeping bag and with characteristic consideration have folded more into a pillow to cushion its tiny head and place it on the bathroom vanity, just so. And my last piece, is named, uh, the book is named for, it's the namesake of the book. Let's say it that way. Wrinkles in Time and in Love, Biocentrism meets Shakespeare. Time is not cast in a die, it is flexible. Wrinkles are produced through satellite travel. Distance and gravitational pull accelerate time. Altitude from the Earth's center distorts time. The Sunyak effect slows and speeds time through rotation. Equatorial spin, like crack the whip on ice skates, makes time run faster and elliptical orbits speed and slow time. 
Love is also not cast, but it can be tested until it dies. When one begins to orbit a new heavenly body, creating distance and is pulled by that source of gravity, when the altitude from walking on air distorts time, slowing when far away, speeding when near, and one has to leave for a landing back home where the heart no longer spins and the equator bulges, this distorted path fails to hold the course, then love is no longer an ever fixed mark. Thank you. Thank you, Nancy Joe, for sharing some of your work with us. The book, once again, is Wrinkles in Time and in Love by Nancy Joe Allen, published by Kelsey Books. <laughs> That's all for now from Third Wednesday Magazine. Be sure to follow us on YouTube for more short videos. You can also follow us on Facebook for updates, featured poems, and more. Thanks for watching. Until next time, goodbye. <laughs>